Broadcasting 13Q presents Cash Call. Ah, there's gay merriment and dancing when someone wins a cash call, friends. On the way to the first million, over $300,000 has been given away so far. And now, as you sit at home and listen to this broadcast, your phone might ring. Answer it with the phrase that pays. I listen to the new sound of 13Q. So until our next live broadcast, 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 broadcast... Answer your phone. I listen to the new sound of 13Q. And my time was running wild in me in dead end streets And every time I thought I got it made It seemed the taste was not so sweet So I turned myself to face me But I've never caught a glimpse How the others must see the faker I'm much too fast to take that test Ch-ch-ch-changes Turn and face the strange Ch-ch-changes The wanna be a richer man
sure, but that's something to sneeze at. 3 3 3 90, 1, 22, I'll be telling you when to call. There's a new program of the Hazelwood and Greenfield communities for families with children under three. It's Baby Power Unlimited. I'm going to check into that. Phone 2421 8065 for information. This dude's name is Billy Swan. Billy Swan. They used to call him Billy Buzzard, but he changed it for an obvious reason. I can help, honey! If you got a problem, don't care what it is. You need a hand, I can assure you this. I can help. I got two strong. With uh, 13Q, your friends rocking and rolling. Uh, 13Q, if you want to answer your phone, I listen to the new side of 13Q. There could be $2,100 in it there for you before it's all over. Yeah, that could be well worth your while. Hey, that was really heavy this morning. Yeah, I had a baby I had a baby girl this morning, which is sort of a quirk of nature because my wife was supposed to have it. However, uh, at 8.05 this morning, uh, my wife gave birth to a six-pound, one-ounce baby girl at McGee Hospital. And it's the first time I'm a father. It's a whole new trip for me. I never I never saw such kibitzing in a hospital. Kibitzing? Yeah, they kid each other, you know, like the nurses and whatever. Or the nurses sit said, how do you like my hair dude? to the doctor? Said, it, uh, doesn't it make me look 10 years younger? And what did the doctor say? The doctor said you were ugly 10 years ago, too. Traveling with the rodeo, it's the only life I'll ever know. I started in New Mexico, must have been a thousand years ago. I used to be the best, they say, at riding young wild horses for my pay. But now I'm much too old, it seems. I only ride wild horses in my dreams. They used to tell me, ride, cowboy. Cowboy in town I've always been a traveling cowboy 
Oh, Midnight was a champion. He's the only bronc I couldn't ride. But now I hear old Midnight's blind. Rides the little children for a dime. Gentlemen, I don't want to use that word. I wish, why do I want to use that word? <laughs> but you know what? On my left is named Frank Zappa, and you've been around. You've been around since dirt. This is what 1963 was when you when you got into the business and uh, started recording rock and roll music as such, right? Give me that microphone. Listen. <laughs> no, it was 1964. It was 1964. I missed it by a year. Um, we, you know what I did? I had people call in questions last night, right? See, they wanted to ask you. And uh, I, I get some very weird ones. One of them is, uh, did you grow up in Pittsburgh because somebody knew uh, Frank Zappa, who was an entertainer, uh, about 60 years ago? And I, I think I could answer that one. There's, there's, a, there's a definite no, right? That's right. That's a definite no, that's for sure. Good. No, but at any rate, no. No, what I, wanted to, what I do want to ask you, I want to ask you a couple hundred, a couple hundred things. You, you are considered to be an extremely avant-garde artist. In other words, you're super ahead of everybody. Um, How and that, that is. What? What? How, how true that is. How yeah. true that is. It is true. It is Give true. Give me the ashtray. Give you, you that way. Oh, you can't talk without an ashtray. Get him an ashtray. All right. There we go. Now, um, you're ahead of everybody uh, most of the time. That puts you under a lot of pressure, doesn't it? It wouldn't me. I mean, you know, trying to create like that. That's right. That's right. You're going to be one of those, aren't you? Yes, no, no, maybe, I might not, then again, I might. No, really. I, it, when you have to create things uh, and come up with new and original things, that, don't you think that that, like, puts a, does that put a strain on you, or do you find that easy to do, come up with things that are ahead of everybody else? The hardest thing to do is find a budget for it. Find a budget for it? That's find, right. I can't find any money <laughs> one way or the other. Well, all right. When you go into a studio... Do you get what you want out of the studio? Like a lot of like a lot of people I've talked to in this business say that they go into the studio with a concept. They know where they're going. They get an idea of what they're going to end up with. They start to record it. They finish it, and it's nothing like they thought it was going to be. And it's either better or worse. It's never just exactly what they thought. Do you get that kind of thing? Or? No, because they're so full of dope when they go in, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and they wouldn't recognize the result when it comes out anyway. All right. Okay. Well, what did, what did you recognize when you, when you got Don't Eat the Yellow Snow? What did you... It was exactly like I wanted it to be. It was exactly what you had anticipated. That's what everybody says about you, that you're very deliberate, that you do things... that you... On purpose! <laughs> On purpose! That's right, you think about them before you do them, which is probably a smart way to do things. But uh, in that case, where are you going? Back to the hotel as soon as I'm done. As soon as I'm done. You want to give your room number? No. <laughs> no, okay. I'm not even the hotel. But you, do you have any idea where your where your recording is going, Franklin? Or do you have? Or do you just uh, or do it as you feel it? Don't you want any surprises? No, I, I want a lot of surprises. Yeah, give me a surprise, and the next one's going to be a surprise. Oh, you're going to do an anthology, right? Ten records. No. You're not. Not right away. In a while. In a while. And you want to put your best stuff on that. You got a, you got enough for ten albums now. Why don't you, why don't you want to do it now? Because I'm not doing an orchestra project. You're going to do an orchestra project. Oh, what like a Wakeman thing or or even more? A Wakeman thing. A Wakeman thing. Oh no. Well, I, I, the reason I brought up that was because like he was. It's really funny. He came out and said he wanted to leave. Yes, because the group was recording too many long things. And then he went and did, did an album. Get into jingles. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's He's going to work at Pam's in Texas. <laughs> That's right. He wanted to do them eight-second jobs. No, I don't know. And he wanted to do those short tunes, and then he put on an album that is one continuous song. That's really kind of... Uh, 
the backwards way to do things. But you 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 want to do something with a symphony? What do you want to do? You've done things with symphony orchestras. Yes, but I want to do it right this time. <laughs> Practice makes perfect. You know what bugs me a lot? Those winter clothing sales. I'm going to try to give away uh, two thousand one hundred dollars. Sit down, Jack. Yeah, there we go. All right. Oh, well, your boss talked to you. Pick up the phone. Rita Camarota, Mayflower Street in East Liberty, went seven thousand nine hundred twenty-three dollars. Frank, you want to go across the room? I'll call you. All you got to do is answer the phone. I listen to the news on 13Q. Then you'd have enough money to do... Uh, That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now we make a cash call to McIntyre Road in Ross Township for $2,100. Wouldn't it be great to have our 65th winner today? $305,000 given away so far in cash call. 2,100 good times on the line right now out there in Ross Township. Oh, you said hello. This is 13Q Radio Station. I'm Jack Armstrong. You don't mind being on the radio with me, do you? No. You know what you just did? Yeah, I know. <laughs> you blew it. I'm sorry to say, you missed out on $2,100. No, I'm not. You should have answered the phone. I listened to the news out of 13Q. You live on McIntyre Road in Ross Township, correct? Oh, uh, well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put your telephone number back into circulation. We could call you back. And if we do, and you answer the phone, I listen to the news out of 13Q. When we call you back, we can give you the money at that time. Okay? Fine. I'm sorry you didn't win. Have a good night. Okay. Bye-bye.
about 10 minutes ago, so whatever happens from here on in is whatever happens from here on in. Thank you sitting here next to me, mainlining coffee, and, uh... Okay, you want to do something weird? You don't want to do anything weird. I'm going to... What would you do if I told you that you, uh, or would somebody come up to you and said you have 60 seconds in which to say everything that you want to say about mankind and you will never speak again? What would you, what would you say in 60 seconds? Arf! <laughs> Arf, that's, that's it, right? Cancel the ticket, clunk. That's it. Chop his tongue out. No, all right. You want to do something with the symphony orchestra. Uh, and I, Does that mean another uh, European tour? You really, you've been in Europe like forever. I did, uh, like always over there with yeah, those people. You go every year. You go every year. Why do you like it over there? I mean, what, well, they, what do they change. got that we ain't got? It's different than Pittsburgh. It's different than Pittsburgh. It is. It is a little unusual. Yes. If not in certain sections. You can go to certain sections. It's just like being there. Uh, no, but uh, like this business. You know, that's very interesting. I noticed something on the way down here. Have you ever been to Amsterdam? No. We just passed a part of town that looks just like the downtown part of Amsterdam. Now, what do you think about that? What do I think about that? Well, I think that if it looks like the downtown part of Amsterdam, that they probably have a... Uh, a, a lot of uh, a lot of old buildings in Amsterdam is probably what you're trying to tell me. Is that no, what? No, 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 it's not, not it. Not at all. It's the architectural <laughs> layout of the square. Oh, it was so nostalgic. I had a flash. You had a flash about being in Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh -huh. Was it a good flash? Or? Well, it was different because Amsterdam's got this immense red light district along the canals. Oh. Oh, a heart, a heart flash. Well, why didn't you tell me? I mean, you know, I, I would have picked up on it, but I didn't. You know. All right. Well, I, what is it that uh, like are the European audiences like more? Responsive, or they're more ebullient and ubiquitous. Oh, they are. In other words, they uh, they are more sophisticated. And well, they're... actually, they're asleep because they're so full of drugs they can't <laughs> move. <laughs> All of us hippie types are that way. Did you hear the boogie that we've had for the problems we've had here? We try to do free concerts, uh -huh. and we need parks to do it in. See, and um, they gave us a park, and we did a thing in the summer with like 140,000 people. Then. Uh, we did another thing at the end of the summer with like a hundred thousand people in this park over here. Then they said, "No more parks. That's it. No more parks. Too many people." Can you uh, can you dig where they're coming from? No more parks. So we did a thing in McKeesport at a park down there. It was just outside of Pittsburgh, and like uh, we did like uh, I guess sixty thousand. But they don't want to give us any more parks, and um, we're having a real problem getting places to put people for these free concerts. Do you think that that is? atypical of what's going on with the uh, politicians across the, they don't want the youth to gather together and that well i think large numbers of people anywhere who don't vote scare them <laughs> right exactly we had a we had a thing here where they found horse meat in the supermarkets and, and instead of beef, right? Okay. I know they weren't selling it as horse meat. Uh, the water pollution got up to outrageous. In fact, people's water was tasting like mothballs. And then uh, the air pollution count got over 200. And that was just before the election. And I, I had a feeling that the politicians were trying to kill us off before we could vote them out. You know, yeah. it was just that, that type of situation. But it's, What's the voting age here? 18. Yeah. 18, yeah. yeah 18. Well, all I can say is if they won't let you in the park, it's your own fault because you can make it happen if you want it to happen. That's right. Vote them out, right? That's in, right. In unison. All together. Vote them out. All right. Do you want to read this? Read that. Go ahead. This is Frank Zappa, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead. That's it. The class of 64 from Central Catholic is having its 10-year reunion November 29th. Mm. Call 561-1626 for information. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Let's get him on and get Eddie Rogers off. Clear and cool tonight. A fog developing low tonight, 33. Clear and mild tomorrow with a high of 60. Clear Saturday with a high of 62 degrees and 44 degrees on the outside at 13 Q. I did a thing here where I was in the, that department store's windows, Horn's window, with 12 pythons, boa constrictors, and I had a flash of you and Alice Cooper. I, I, you are explicable because uh, we were playing Don't Eat the Yellow Snow, and Cooper because of the boa constrictor, but um, you, don't, you, you don't do things with snakes and things in your act, that type of thing. Anymore. No, I never did anything with snakes in my act. You never, never did. But it, you've done some weird things. Well, it depends on your orientation. I think that what we do is not only normal, but worthwhile. Yeah, well, there's there's a message, is what you're trying to tell me. Then. No, not, <laughs> not especially. Not especially a message, but uh, it's worthwhile. What do you expect an audience, the average rock audience, to get out of one of your performances? I expect them to get off. That's the first thing, right? Yes. That's... <laughs> Dancing in the aisles, finger popping time. No, but you know, like, uh, do you expect them to uh, ultimately walk away and three three months later be sitting down and say, "Oh yeah, now I know what he was driving at"? That type of thing. Oh, I would consider it a failure if they did that. 
You do. In other words, it has to be an immediate thing. No. <laughs> they should never be able to figure it out. That's it. That's if they figure it out, you're in trouble. That's right. <laughs> when it comes time to buy a diamond for your woman, don't get lost with all the things that shake down with the cut. <laughs> when it comes time to buy a diamond for your woman, hey, yeah, don't 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 get uh, crazy with all the boogies about cut, color, clarity, carrot weight, and things like that. Your line. But it all comes down to one thing. Get over to Capels. Capels. <laughs> Tell them that you, together, right? Tell, Tell them what you want to spend on a diamond for your check. And let them show you what your money will buy. They have the largest selection of diamond rings in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. That's good. And they buy so many diamonds that they buy them direct from the diamond exchange in Belgium. They, they buy, buy more, more for less, less and you, you make, make out because they can charge less. And Capel's credit is quick, easy, and friendly. And teen accounts are welcome at Capel, Liberty Avenue, downtown, East Ohio Street, North Side, and Pin Mall in East Liberty. Shop the new Capel's Washington Mall Store in, in Washington, Washington, PA. Now, now open. open. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, Capels will cancel tomorrow, and uh, I wonder what I'll be doing for work. Joe Walsh, you smoker, you drink the player, you get out Jack Armstrong, and this guy over here with the weird uh, mustache and uh, Adolf Hitler little thing underneath his chin is Frank Zappa. You don't like me describing you like that, do you, Frank? No, it's so sick the way you talk about it. <laughs>
take when you take a look at what's happening in like rock and roll today, or do you keep up with what's happening in rock and roll today? No, you don't. No, you don't. What do you, you know? You know? You know? You know about Elton John? I mean, you'd have to know about Elton John, right? Yeah, I've heard about. Elton John. Yeah, right. But you like this? More interesting sunglasses that I've seen. <laughs> Some of the more interesting sunglasses. Ah, did you get it? That's it. I just want to pass that on because you faded away on me there. No, uh, as a, as a, as a musician, do you aspire, uh, desire, uh, do do you want to be uh, like a a super musician on an album and like really stand back and say, watch this, folks, or do you really stay with your concepts and say, the hell with what uh, you know what they think of me as a musician as such? I just struggle to get a good cup of coffee wherever I go. <laughs> I can see that this is going nowhere. What is it, Dad? Uh, what is it that you really find in society that is uh, that needs correcting? Do you find anything? Do you do you judge society, or do you just uh, reflect uh, what you feel and uh, and or a little of society? You have to reflect what you live around. I mean, you know. But do you do you I'm find an audience for it? Yeah, right. right. Well, I mean, I'm hip. You're, you're digging what's coming out. You mean, in other words, right. like what's what's bouncing off the walls? What do That's you what, right. do you find anything really? Well, I mean, I know there's a few things, but do you find anything that really a turns you off and b turns you on about what you're that you're feeding on? Well, you know, there are a lot of things that really turn me off, and then again, there are some things that turn me on, but yeah. none of them can be discussed on your radio program. <laughs> uh, that brings me to this other question about it. You you know a, a chick by the name of Dinamo Hum that uh, that was asked by a guy out in Penn Hills. I'm supposed to ask you some of these questions that people. Uh, okay, well, let's go down the list. Okay, number one, which <laughs> album is are the album is the album you're most proud of? Lumpy Gravy. Well, uh, oh, why? Because it's my favorite one. It is. You don't have any reason. Well, it took the longest to put together. That's one of the reasons. That's, That's one of them. Uh, the bill comes back and you say, my God, look at that, two hundred fifty grand for recording. What's the most you ever spent in a recording studio? Do you know? Sixty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand. Yes. When it supposedly pepper what cost. Uh, Quarter of a million or three hundred thousand. That's something. because they go in there and they're so tore up they don't know what they're doing <laughs> till they hear it back again. <laughs> Quote Stephen Stills. All right, listen. Uh, how did you get so crazy? I'm not crazy at all. No, you're not. No. What's that guy with you with a jacket with the arms that uh, that tie around behind you? No, no, he's really not, folks. He's not the least bit crazy. Hard to understand sometimes. What's the craziest thing you ever did? Hey, that's a good question. Because for you, that's <laughs> that is the craziest thing I ever did. Yes. Uh -huh. Think about that. I black out whenever I hear that question. They ask me all the time. <laughs> right, and nothing ever comes across your... Well, your life has been one big crazy thing, usually. Yes, it's been a big crazy thing. A big That's crazy what... thing. Who is your favorite artist? And don't tell me Picasso. You mean painters are excluded? <laughs> no, that's it. The painters are out of the picture. Oh. This is rock and roll now. My favorite rock and roll artist? Rock and roll, per se. Yeah. Oh, I don't have any, really. You don't? You don't like what's coming out? I don't pay attention to it, really. Really? Well, what is your what kind of music do you like? Um, the kind of stuff you don't play on your radio station. <laughs> what was? <would> you, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, don't you, kids? You know symphony orchestras and stuff. <laughs> All right, where do you get your ideas for your songs? Well, I meet a lot of people. You know, you travel around. I must meet about half a million people a year. You know, some of them are outstanding. And some of them are mild. And some of them are That's fully packed. Right. That's right. <laughs> and if they're not fully packed when I meet them, they're packed later. Uh, <laughs> All right, did you ever run into a chick named Dynamo Hum? You spelled it wrong. <laughs> no, I never did, but one day I will. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> well, we'll leave that alone and move right. What was, your, what was the first recording company? Uh, what year did you get started? The first recording company was Blue Verve, a subsidiary of MGM, the crookedest record company in the industry. <laughs> and it was 1965 when they took the plunge and signed the Mothers of Invention for a grand total of $2,500. Wow. That's hey. a big brick. That's a really big yeah, buck, man. Really big. You split that up and it disappeared right away. I imagine it did. Uh, hey, that reminds me. All right. Mothers of Invention. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? And that's why we got the name, because they wouldn't sign a group called the Mothers, which is what we were called. And they said a radio station will never play a record by a group called the Mothers. Is that true? We played it. Well, that shows you what they know. That was 65. Well, I was still to played it. I did play it. I played some things. Wait, yeah. I can't even remember the names of them. You had something out on, on Verve uh, in 67 that was a single. And I played Big it. Leg Emma. No, did it, that wasn't the name of it. Yeah. It was? Yeah. And the other side was called, Why Don't You Do Me Right? Maybe that's what I played. Maybe we played the wrong side. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Is he married? Yes, twice. 
Well, you keep learning, you know. You pick up a little bit here, a little bit there. Practice makes perfect. Yeah, I'd say, <laughs> if you don't get it right the first time, you get it right. Does Johnny Osmond mean anything to you? Yes. What's it mean? Revulsion. <laughs> Could he be imagining people freaking out in Pittsburgh? Huh. Of course I could. <laughs> of course you can imagine such thing. I was going to ask you that. I'm going to ask you that anyway. I was going to ask you about audiences and stuff and people in Pittsburgh. You played two shows here last night. Both of them sold out. Uh, what do you think about our audiences? I know the audiences differ from town to town. What do you think of it? the people? Well, I mean, what would you like to have me compare a Pittsburgh audience to? I don't know. Is there, is there another town you can compare it to? I mean, like, you know, Austin, uh, Texas? Or... No, it's very different from Austin, Texas. Absolutely different from Austin, Texas. Can you remember each audience? Yes. You do? Yes. As a person or as a group? Or as an aura. As an aura. That's right. You, see, you envision this glow. No, you don't get a glow. You get a sum total vibe. Ah, oh, I see. And it, it picked up from... I'm, it's like get... it's not like an aura. It's more like a, con a corporate logo of all the people sitting in the room. They have a projection that comes off of them, you know? Yeah, I, I, I get, you know, it's funny, I get that here some yeah. nights. Right here, 
You know, and there's no way in the world that I've got any contact with anybody. I mean, I see maybe one or two people a night besides my engineer and the guy that answers the phones. And, and that's it. And you can sit right here and not even talk on the phone to anybody and get an aura. And you, and you, you feel like they're with you or they aren't with you. You know, you well, get the feeling that they're... It's merely jock fatigue. That's what... <laughs> I wouldn't touch that one with a 50-foot one. No, I really... Uh, I was, we were talking about uh, artists and people like Chuck Berry. And they and his yes, lyrics. Yes, we were. were we? <laughs> right, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> For sure. Uh, no, we were talking about uh, some of the things he's done, and he's never been known as a lyricist, uh, as somebody who writes lyrics, which is really stupid because he does. As we were saying, he writes some incredible lyrics. He writes good music too, but he wrote some incredible lyrics over the over the years. What do you want to be known as? As a lyricist, uh, a guy with good music, uh, uh, a guy who was always ahead of his time, or what? You know, a guy who helped to influence the restaurants of America toward making better coffee. I, all right, let me write that down. That time of year is approaching again. <laughs> if I'm lying, I'll die. Hey, Wolfman Jack, uh, let me get this straight. No charge, man. And TriClear is so large size, the economy size that helps you save. It's available in the skincare section of popular food and drug stores where you shop. What you use, Clearasil or uh, uh, hydrochloric acid? I used a lot of different things growing up. Uh, I used oatmeal soap. Oatmeal soap? Yes. I never tried that. I tried that other stuff. At, uh, Paraxo. <laughs> Same thing. Ovaltine. I don't know. Just throw it on your face and pray a lot. That's, that's a terrible thing, man, you know. Do you ever have any feelings of, like, helping people who were where you were several years ago who are there now? Do you know what I mean? Like, you're about five years ahead of people. Do you ever feel like, oh, I ought to go back and help those people over that hump because I remember how bad that was? And, like, you know, acne is an example, but it's a bad one. But, I mean, you know what I'm saying. In other words, there were trips that we all went through, and, like, I, I have a lot of sympathetic feelings for people who go through those same trips, and I feel like I ought to help them a little bit, you know. Do you ever get Well, you know, when you start helping people like that, you have to shoulder the responsibility because if you tell them about something that they don't know and they don't understand, yeah. You're getting them into trouble because many of them are happier being stupid. <laughs> There's nothing worse than unsolicited advice. That's is what, true. Is that what you're trying to do? Oh, my goodness gracious. Frank Zappa is sitting here on his 75th cup of coffee. You don't work for Nescafe or something, do you? No, no Nescafe. Three degrees. 828 with Jackson Armstrong at 13Q. When will I see you again?
struggle with ground glass before I come in here. Hey, listen, uh, that, uh, we were talking in between, in between tunes. Uh, there's a tune out by Deep Purple, which you're familiar with. And, uh, Frank, you're not up, you're not completely familiar with a lot of things that are out with rock and roll, right? Because that's true. That's true. Okay. But you are familiar with Smoke on Water. Yes. All right. Where did that line come from? What is the uh, significance of the line and, and, and with the Deep Purple line and Smoke on Water? Well, we just happened to be working at this place in Montreux, Switzerland, and uh, in the middle of our show, some jerk in the audience set off some fireworks, and the place caught fire, and the fire caused about $2 million worth of damage, $30,000 of which was our equipment that we had on stage at that time. We lost all of our equipment, and uh, the place we were working was uh, the location where Deep Purple was going to do their next album. They had all their stuff set up in there. Oh. And when the when the fire did it, it just wrecked their session. They re wrecked all their equipment too. Well, I don't know how much equipment, you know, band equipment they had there, but they had a recording truck in the garage of the place. Oh, forty, fifty grand there alone, maybe huh? at least. Yeah, well, that's incredible. Well, that, you know, like if, when something like that happens. Well, let's see. Did that the night you got shoved off the stage? No, that was a week later. <laughs> it was one of those tours. That's right. <laughs> those were the days. <laughs> what happened there? A guy came. I, I, that was in Switzerland too. Or? No, that was London. That was jolly old England. Oh. So there was a crazy person in the audience that came up on stage after we finished our encore and knocked me off the stage, 15 feet down into a concrete floored orchestra pit. Oh. I never knew what happened to me, and I woke up and I didn't know where I was. My neck was twisted around, my leg was broken, my rib was broken, I had a hole in the back of my head, oh. a big crease in my chin. I spent a month in the hospital in England and nine months in a wheelchair. Oh. Hey! And while all that was happening, he wrote the lyrics to Don't Eat the Yellow Snow, right? No, it, that's, that must have been a terrible experience for him. Elton John, by Yellow Brick Road in the album of the same name of 13Q. When are you gonna come?
talking about respective gigs and whatnot, and not talking about frogs either. But I'm, I, we're talking about uh, you know, like I uh, think radio is like really safe for me because I like to hide from people. I got into radio because. I could get behind a microphone and nobody could see who I was and I could do things with my voice and project an image and never have to show my face, you know, and that's why I really got paranoid in doing personal appearances on television, which is what happened later on. You got into show business on the being out in front of people first, I guess, and then recording like came later. And uh, No, I used to be a disc jockey too. Oh, did you, <laughs> did you really? Yeah, I was. Oh, no, where, man? I can't tell you. <laughs> right, you don't want me to know. No. <laughs> What'd you think of that life? Hey, what a dull life. <laughs> right. No wonder you're sitting around here tapping on everything with your pencil as soon as the microphone is turned off your tents. Cling, cling, you're cling. Wired. Bang, bang, bang. Well, I've ditched back three hours of sleep between here and there. Uh, and I just, uh, I, we had a baby girl this morning, my wife and I. And uh, I have had like three hours of sleep. And. Uh, I don't know. Hey, listen, uh, that's off the subject. That's completely another world. Get back to where we were. I was reading some things that you No, have... talk about your child. I know you want to talk about your child no. on the radio. <laughs> I love my baby, you hear me? Hey. <laughs> emotion, pure emotion dribbles through the radio, and you'll clean it up. No, uh, actually, uh, I was reading some of the things in the press release. What's this thing about that you, that you were quoted as having said about dreams uh, about people who are, are dreamers. This is a, 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 a bad environment for people who are dreamers. Are you, are you speaking of yourself uh, as such as being like a dreamer and this is a bad environment to exist in because... Like, well, you know, I'm a dreamer, but I'm a tough dreamer. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> Fight back those people. That's right. <laughs> they won't get in the way of my dreams. <laughs> right. Uh, yes, I have a line here, but I can't use it on dreams. Uh, no, I was... <laughs> I, I, I was right. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go by. Why... Why Why all the different groups over the years? What, nine different groups of Frank? Is no, that was only nine different pictures that were in there. There's been more than nine different groups. There's probably been 15, maybe 20 different groups. And a lot of people who were, were in X groups and went in and joined your group, you actually formed a group out of sympathy once, right? Uh, of course. <laughs> right. Why else? <laughs> right. You want to be in a group? All right, let's, let's form a group, everybody over here. That wants to... Now, why did you? when you form a group like that, do you have in your mind that you're going to do something with the group? Or do you have in mind, well, we're going to make a few bucks here for these guys, and then, and then you know, that'll be it or what? No, usually what happens is we keep going until it stops going. And then some people quit, and the other people don't work out, and I fire them, and it keeps changing. And people who have been in before come back, and then they go, and they go, and they come back. And... Some guys have been in and out of the group five times. What is it? Do you have anybody who's not in the group that you wish was, you know, like with you now that uh, is no longer around? Or do you have no bad feelings about anybody who's left? I'm only interested in the group that I have right now. And that's it. Do you that's keep it. your mind on the present? Well, I mean, that's the only way to perform, I guess. Did they, do, you, do people find it tough to work with you with your mind accelerated like that, being ahead of like what's going on? I mean, I would find that really tough because... Like, they find it extremely difficult. <laughs> right. What do you mean by that, Frank? You know, right. do, you, do, you, do you go in with sheet music and stuff when you go into a studio, or do you like write a lot when you're in a studio? Uh, both. Both. Yeah. So there's part of preparation, and then there's part of like what you feel. Yeah, huh? That's right. Well, I guess that gives a, that gives the album a lot of uh, a lot of you reflection. I know when you when you do a, a commercial, and uh, I've had some experience with groups, and you do a tune over and over again, it loses a lot of feeling. Like if you can you can record something uh, three, four, five times, you get up over five times, and it gets mechanical. You know, yeah, yeah that's what uh, my feelings. So do you find that's true, or do you? Well, you know, a lot of those Motown records up to eighty, ninety takes <laughs> on the vocals. They layered those though, right? They sang like a verse. And then they kept that verse, and then they would go and put another verse after that verse. Yeah, that's right. And, oh, that's, that's to me right. that would that must be torture sitting yeah. there like that and listening and try to feel enthused about the song. And uh, that's right, it's really hard. Do you do you ever knock down tracks and take them home and listen to them and then put vocals on them later or and that type of thing? Yes. Do you find that's an inspiration? Like you come up with different words from the music. Yeah, that helps. Yeah, like I can write a commercial. I can get the music, set the music down, listen to the music, and that'll inspire me to write words for a commercial, but I have to listen to the music sometimes. Yeah, but you're a poet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a poet, are you nuts? The band that boogies best, the Jay Giles Band, and special guest Fog Hat, plus Duke Williams and the Extremes, appearing Friday, November the 29th, for a big Thanksgiving concert at the Civic Arena. That's Jay! Tickets are 5.25 in advance, 6.25 at the door. Available at National Record Marks and Kaufman's.
that was me, and this is me. Hey, you know, next to buying a car or a home, a diamond ring could be the most important thing. Here we go again. You'll, <laughs> you'll ever buy. And let's face it, which reminds me, have you got a razor on you? No. If you're like most guys. You don't know. Where to start when it comes to buying a... Diamond. That's why you... Should... Start... And... Finish... Apples. <laughs> and if you ever want to trade up... That's a trade up. Up, up, up. That's into the bigger class diamonds. <laughs> or a Coke bottle. <laughs> All right. Capples will... Apply your original purchase price towards your, your new, new Coke bottle. Your new diamond there. No boogies, just the best, straightest deal on a diamond you'll find in... Town. Town, that's town. This is Pittsburgh, you know. Capel's Credit. Is easy, quick, and friendly. So come on, all you pimps and teen accounts <laughs> are welcome at Capel's. <laughs> Liberty Avenue, downtown, East Ohio Street on the north side, and Penn Mall in East Liberty. Come on, get dressed up, and let's go out and make a little money. <laughs> Shop the new Capel's Washington Mall store in Washington, PA. Where am I working tomorrow? Kenny Loggins and Jim Messina. Available now at your nearby national record markets. Sugar sitting here trying to destroy a radio station. Uh, I'll be here for the next few minutes anyway. Guess who? From Road Food Club for the Wolfman at 13 Q.
University Dance Marathon for Muscular Dystrophy are seeking donations all over Pittsburgh. The marathon begins November the 15th. Give money now to support the contestants. All donations go to fight muscular dystrophy. Keep Planned Parenthood operating. You should talk. Yeah, mail contributions to Planned Parenthood, 526 Penn Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15222. They're going to make me poster boy for Planned Parenthood. Try to make it retroactive, I guess. Clear and cool tonight with fog developing. Low tonight, 33 it's degrees. Cool tonight. <laughs> Clear and cool. Cool. Cool out there, all you boss jocks to be. Clear and cool tonight with fog developing. A low 33 degrees. Clear and mild tomorrow with a high 60. Clear and something on Saturday mild, I guess. And a high 62 degrees. 43 degrees at 13 Q with Jack Armstrong. We're speaking with Mr. Frank Zappa, the weird one. And Frank... Uh, somebody just called in and wanted to know if you have any kids. You got any kids? I have three children. You have three children? That's right. How old are they? One is five months, mm -hmm. one is five years, and the other one is seven years. All mm right. -hmm. What boys, girls are... Two it... boys and a girl. The girl is the oldest. Oh, yeah? You had a girlfriend? That's what happened to me. I just had a girl. Hey, listen, I'm telling you. Do you wait, like me? Listen, this thing? Wait till they start growing up. Oh, yeah? yeah. Is that is that is that good? Oh, yeah. That's really nice, huh? You, somebody told me you can see... Wait till they ask for a car. A car? Wait a minute. <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> Seven, eight years old. Hey, wait. I want to borrow a car. <laughs> no, listen. They tell me you can see a personality evolve in children as they get older. In other words, like you see your, your own personality reflected, uh, your wife's personality is reflected, the community's personality is reflected. What kind of personalities do you see reflected in your kids? Do you see yourself? We try and leave them alone as much as possible so that we don't get in their way so that they can be what they're going to be. You know in other I mean? words, you see they, you see themselves. That's what you... That's right. So they're, they're different people. But what, what happens then if, you, if they turn into people you don't like? That, that can happen. Their prerogative. <laughs> right. Then they can go into radio. <laughs> right. All right. That, we can get them a job for sure. All right. Listen. Uh, I, had, I had something else. Oh, yeah. What kind of women do you like? Somebody told me to ask you that. Huh, now this one's a contemplating question. Well, I'll put it to you this way. <laughs> All right. I'm partial to Australians. Oh, hey, that's great. There's like, uh, what is it, like 70% women in Australia. And some of them are even more. <laughs> you know what bugs me a lot? Oh, that's good. Well, let's go ahead and tell me that. Go ahead and tell me that again. Frank Zappa, ladies and gentlemen. What do you, we were, I was asking him if this was really getting on his nerves doing his thing. And uh, you, you gave me a good, a good reply. Oh, I've been up since 6 o'clock this morning writing music, and this is a pleasant diversion. Yeah, that's true. When you get too close to something, you need to get away from it for a That's minute. right. And this is about as far away from it as I could get. Are <laughs> <laughs> well, you saying something about my music? What is this? No, actually, on your album, 200 Motels, the song Peanut Dimensions, uh, what were those words of advice you were giving? Have you talked to any vegetables? Uh, you see, do you know do you know the material that's being referred to here? Are you familiar with this? No, this material? you got me. I'm going to be. It off. cannot be discussed on your station. Is that why they're asking? Is that what it is? Yeah, that figures. Okay, well then, there's no way we can uh, dodge around there. Oh shoot! Just remember one thing: anything over a mouthful is wasted. Oh, oh, oh I, that's a very titillating comment. Uh, have you talked any vegetables? No. No. Oh, you haven't talked to any. Ve well, that's. What do you mean? That what do you mean by vegetables? coming along. Oh well. Hey, you want to read that? You re you want to? Uh, you really want to do and it? And now the news. Okay. <laughs> okay. Authorities now list the dead as only one and the injured as 18 in the latest pub bombing, or is that pube bombing <laughs> in London? They say other revisions in the toll still may be made in Ulster. Two British soldiers were blown. To bits earlier today when they triggered a landmine near Belfast. A nationwide coal strike looms, but negotiators say they will not resume deliberations tonight. Both sides are taking the night off to study their bargaining positions and catch up on paperwork before getting together again tomorrow morning. The Atomic Energy Commission has spelled out strict new security measures it plans to impose on nuclear power plants and fuel shippers. The AEC says the rigid new rules will safeguard against theft of fissionable materials. In Colorado, the sheriff of Cheyenne Wells got even with voters who threw him out of office Tuesday. Uh -huh. He turned off the little town's burglar alarm system. Burglars took advantage of the silence. But the ex-sheriff says he doesn't care. He's tired of babysitting the town anyway. And that's the news, UPI. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that was a Frank Zappa newscast. All rights for reproduction and rebroadcast strictly prohibited.
Towns and Things. We were talking about towns and things. What do you do? You, do you ever do you ever realize you haven't lived a normal life since 1964? I mean, you were always on the go. You go to you're not you're up. You're here, or you're formulating a new album, or you're putting together a new show, or you're firing people and hiring people, and and there's always something happening for you. Do you realize what these people? who live in Pittsburgh go through. I mean, you know, like for entertainment and that type of thing. Do you, are you aware I of I have a rough, and I say a rough <laughs> idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there's just really not a whole lot to do in the world. You know, have you, never, have you ever noticed that? That there's not a lot to do in the world? In the world. Well, I mean, like, for normal, everyday run. I mean, there's television and there's us. That's why the Italians brought drugs to America. <laughs> Uh, all right. No. Uh, what, what I was saying, though, is <laughs> what do you what do you do for diversion? Do you, I mean, you got to get away from it every once in a while. And well, like, I'm here. You know, this, this is, is diversion. This, this is highly diverted. Do you ever go to movies or anything like that? Very seldom. You do. Well, what, what, what you know, like if, if you don't go to movies, then what, what do you do besides go to radio stations? I mean, you have to. That's a job, really, Frank. I mean, well, you know. Yes and no, you know. Sometimes yeah. it's fun. You can go down there and actually have laughs at a radio station. I mean, for you, it's a job because you work here. Yeah, right. For me, I would come down here because, you know, it's something to do. It's better than sitting in a hotel room. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that holds some merit, I guess. A little bit better. Well, anyway, what I was going to say is, uh, from the work that I do, I'm so tired, you know, when I get a chance. My main diversion is either sleep or lust. Uh, well, okay, that's true. Uh, I think that's very relaxing, usually. That's a great relaxer, in fact. Well, I mean, exchanging of emotion is always, uh, of any form. Oh, shut up. Yeah, anger, right, anything. It doesn't make any difference. Or did you mean that? No. All right. <laughs> All right. All right, well, listen. Uh, that if, if you got anything that, uh, that any message that you would like to uh, put over to people? If you got anything that you would like to say? To yes, I have something that I want to say to everyone right now. Uh-huh. Goodbye. Oh, no. <laughs> 13Q Concerts. You'll be winning soon at your station. 13Q. Frank has left us. Frank Zappa, ladies and gentlemen. A man who is undoubtedly a genius and undoubtedly way ahead of his time. A super person. Cats in the Cradle, Harry Chapin at 13Q at 858. I had arrived just the other day. He came to the world in the usual way. But there were planes to catch and bills to pay. He learned to walk while I was away And he was talking for a new it And as he grew, he'd say I'm gonna be like you, Dad You know I'm gonna be like you And the cats in the cradle and the silver spoon A little boy too and the man on the moon When you're coming home, Dad, I don't know when But we'll get together then You know we'll have a good time then
it's sure nice talking to you, Dad. It's been sure nice talking to you. And as I hung up the phone, it occurred to me he'd grown up just like me. My boy was just like me.